Hello everybody, welcome and welcome back. Today we're going to be playing on the best of one standard ranked ladder with our Borblethip and Slogurk the Overslime land deck. Basically, this big old land pile wants you to play Borborygmos and Fibblethip. Uh, so it enters the battlefield, you draw a card, and you can discard any number of land cards. Uh, when you discard one or more cards this way, it deals twice that much damage to target creature. Uh, so you want to have Slogurk the Overslime on the field when you're doing this, so you can double trigger. And if you, you know, you can discard three different lands at once, deal six damage to a creature, put three counters on Slogurk. You can pop the counters off of it, bounce the Slogurk, return those lands, and when you attack with Borborygmos and Fibblethip, you can just rinse and repeat. So this deck has a very fun late game, uh, full of value with bouncing Slogurks after channeling your channel lands, binning them to Borborygmos, blowing up your opponent's creatures, whatever. Uh, so to support this, we're going to be playing some Strangles and Lightning Strikes for early interaction, Deep Root Wayfinder is a nice little blocker on the ground that can also ramp you out. Teachings of the Kirin is in here because it interacts beautifully with Slogurk, fills up your graveyard, gives you uh, spirit tokens, and it can. the backside can also give you extra spirit tokens and extra counters. Hajar, Loyal Bodyguard, is here to protect our big bombs. And we're running some Miklaws, the Maze Crusher, as a little bit of artifact and enchantment removal. Nihiri's Warcrafting and Fable of the Mirror Breaker give us a little bit of card selection, and Fable of the Mirror Breaker, of course, everyone knows is busted, so we're running four of it to help keep this pile together. And a couple Doomscar Warriors up at the top end to help us with card selection. If we don't have things like Gurk or the Borborygmos and Fibblethip, the Doomscar Warrior can help you dig towards them. And a Conduit of Worlds is going to help us with our late game against other mid-range and control decks. Uh, if the hand's empty, we can just cast spells out of the graveyard, so it's pretty cool. This deck has a lot of versatility and interaction, and I always have a blast when I play it. So if you guys are excited to see this in action, make sure to drop a like, leave a comment, and make sure you're subscribed if you aren't already. I've been uploading for the past three months every single day, and I do not plan on stopping, so if you guys are interested in any of these decks, make sure to drop a sub. With all that said, let's hop onto the ladder and see how this does. Alrighty, game one. Um, hand is looking a little rough. Kinda want a mulligan, but we at least have a Baseu for some extra interaction. And we should have all the lands we need, so hopefully we don't draw too many more. The opponent's gonna start it off with a farmland. Let's play our thicket, or our copper line gorge, and we'll pass. And they play a forest. So is this enchantments? Mm, counters. Okay. Let's get our Yavamaya coast down, and we'll play a teachings. Let's see if opponent has their siege vet. Just a cure on beast caller. We'll take two. We'll put a counter on our spirit. And let's play meat paws. We can attack here, but if we don't, or if opponent doesn't draw a land, these blocks will keep both from attacking. And they play an Ozolith. Our teachings flips. So we could destroy the Ozolith with Miglaws. If we do that, next turn Borborygmos and Fibblethip should be able to clean this uh, board up. Or, oh yeah, no, we have the Baseyu, but that will give them an extra land. Hmm. 
Let's take the oil counters off. And we'll get in for four. We'll pass. Second Ozolith from the opponent. Let's channel that. And we'll blow it up now. We'll get them their land on their end step. They grab a planes and back to us. So we have to play our coast here to play the Borble Thip, which is a little annoying. We do have to draw a land off the top of the deck. Yeah, let's play him. I'm willing to discard the Odawara. We'll take two. We draw, let's discard the Odawara. And I think we go with the Beast Caller. We'll take it out while there's no counters. We'll attack with everybody. And we'll take out an Ozolith. Put a counter on the Kirin. And that's eight. GG's. Alrighty. Next game. Uh, it's a very slow hand, but we are on the draw. An opponent has taken a mulligan, so I think we'll risk it. Opponent's gonna play Jetmir's Garden. Let's start it off with our tapped triome. And Proving Ground. So it looks like we are gonna be going against the, uh, most likely five color ramp domain deck. Yep, there's the stomper. And we've only drawn land so far. Unfortunate. Let's play our fable. We'll make our shaman and pass. Second Stomper. So if they have a land next turn, that does unlock their Stompers to attack. Let's bin these two Pain Lands here. And we draw Borborygmos and another land. Let's play this Forest. And we can attack, make a treasure, bin these two lands, blow up one of the stompers, and have a blocker for the other. Seems decent. Let's cast Borble Thip. And we'll blow up that one. Leyline Binding. Unfortunately gonna take that out, but we do have a Meek Laws, so we can get it back. And Fable Flips. I think here we're gonna attack for two. We'll see if opponent blocks. And... We'll go with Luca. We're gonna minus four. And just go two there. We'll pass, and we just have to hope they don't have a Droxa. Herd migration is definitely a rough one. Let's play our land. And we're gonna plus Luca. We'll go with Meek Laws. And let's go with our teachings. 
two lands in a Gurk. And we'll play Hajar. And we're gonna pass. Everything at Luka. Alright. I'll take my one free block. And a Sunfall. Unfortunate, so we'll give him one less creature. Alright, we got a Wayfinder. And we got a Gurk. And we'll pass. What lands do we have in the bin? Baseyu, Sock and Zon. Cool. Let's block with the Gurk. Baseyu, Sock and Zon, and not a pain land. Teachings is gonna flip. So we can get back Barbarigmos and Fibble Thib. Or we can just blow up their 7-7. Seven, seven. Um, yeah, if we blow up the 7-7, seven, seven, then we can also play our Doomscar Warrior. So, I think we do that. Well, I mean, we could have played the Doomscar Warrior and the Say regardless, but I think that's going to be the best option to get as much pressure off of the field as possible, and that will allow us to deal a bit more damage. Let's back up onto the Wayfinder, and in for three. Let's grab a Miglaz. And we'll keep Fable on top, and we'll bring this land back. Another Sunfall. Let's play our Fable here. I want to hold the Meek Laws for as long as possible. Just so if they have some other sort of board wipe, we can get Borble Fit back as our last resort. Uh, so if we channel this, they're going to animate that. They can block twice, or they can block one of them. Yeah, we'll just pass. We'll, we can channel this on their end step. Or we can use it to make blockers and. Who knows? Oh, jeez. Another herd migration. In for three. Let's channel. And we'll block. I think we keep both of these. The question is, what do we use? If we use the Nahiri's Warcrafting, we get a look at the top two. We play the Miglaws, we blow up the Binding, we have two big dudes to block their beasts. I think that's gonna be a little bit better. And we'll pass. Opponent's gonna go to attacks, and in with everybody. Let's blow up the binding. We draw, and if we discard this, it'll deal two damage. So we'll do that. Target one of those. We'll block there, there, there. go down to 10, they play a land, and back to us. Fable flips. 
Let's go with the Warcrafting. We'll grab a Lightning Strike. We'll attack with both of these guys. Discard. Oh, so it's only to creatures. Go like that. Give him plus two, plus two. And lightning strike to the face. GG's. Thank you everybody for watching. I appreciate it. Like, comment, subscribe, and I will catch you in the next one. Peace.